what up we are back and uh we are late up late <laughs> you know how we do it it's it's still technically comic book day <laughs> yeah yeah we still got almost three hours or at least two from where i'm at yeah so anyway so if, if you're up we'd like to thank y'all for joining us we're bored and uh I went and got some books. Jeffrey got like Jeffrey got a book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I couldn't believe it when I walked in. He's like, you only got one book this week. I was like, what? I go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do some shopping then. That's what I thought. But I was like, I was doing another show earlier tonight with Comic Head eighty four and Chad ninety mother F and comics. So I was kind of in a hurry, and I guess I overlooked. I had I had some serious thoughts about a few books, but I ended up passing on those. And there's one book that I wish I would have got that I think I was in too big of a hurry to see, but I ended up walking out with one book today. Really? <laughs> this one, I got a whole bunch, man. Like, uh, which was kind of cool because I like I I haven't really been uh, going to LCSs lately. I've just been like kind of buying like just books that I wanted and so like this is the first time like that I went I'd say probably like a month like that I went to an actual LCS besides my buddy shop which I don't count that as going to an LCS what the heck are you eating Jeffrey <laughs> a granola bar uh, <laughs> I got the whole box right here Damn. Uh-oh. You have the variety pack. Yeah, I haven't even had a chance to eat dinner yet, so <laughs> I was like, bam. He's growing the Tony Stark, man. <laughs> not in dirt, dude. Like, he's not even facial hair. I was working in dirt all day today, so, like, I, kept, I, I dumped a bunch of dirt on my head on accident, and I had it all over my face, so I was like, it, it makes it look darker than it really is. It's, I don't really have any facial hair. It's just <laughs> my face. <laughs> I know. He's got, like, this, this stuff going on in his face. Yeah. I, I, I need to take a shower, man. <laughs> that's, it, that's the problem. It's the granola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I picked up a few books that... Uh, Cause like I was off today, I was bored, and uh, <laughs> my wife had spent some money the other day, so I got to spend some money today. So. Oh, nice! So I went to I think there was three three shops. I went to three shops. Yeah, and uh, the first shop I went to, uh, I don't know if y'all have them out here, but they're like vintage stocks. That's what we have. Them. We have them like in the Midwest. I don't know if y'all have them. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> what is it? Jeffrey <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. try to church it up, son. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You so, know what's funny? Like, what? That's my alarm, uh, is, uh, is it puts the lotion on. <laughs> oh, that's man. what. Like it'll wake you up, dude. I'm serious. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, so yeah, the first, uh, yeah, the first place I went to was a, a vintage stock. I don't know if y'all have, but like, it's kind of like a second and Charles or or a half price books, but it's like they sell video games there too and stuff. So it's oh wow, like, that's cool. It's kind of like a like an all around hobby shop, I guess. That's what I would call it because like every time I go in there, it's like. They have comics, they have books, they have videos, movies, you know, pops, all that stuff. So, oh, yeah, sick. yeah, catch all the, it's cool. Catch all the rewind, man. Don't worry about yeah, that. thanks for stopping by, Huda. Good to see you, so, as always. I don't remember where I got, oh, yeah, I got this, what's this, this. And I'll show you the ones I got from there. So, hold on. Let's, let's I actually see. got another book, just one other book. But oh, yeah. I think... I think it's a book for the hunt, so I can't show you or anybody uh, else. I'll just show all these. I don't really care because, like, these are just books that I got because 
I wanted to get them. And then, like, but, uh, yeah, this first one's, uh, you know, it was only a dollar. And actually, it still got the price on it, too. So it was only a dollar, right. but it's a uh, new X Men uh, 114 when they started the, the cool black leather, you know, the. Oh, wow. And the first appearance of Cassandra somebody or something like that. So it's the first, oh. first appearance of somebody though, but it's only a dollar though. But I like the cover because it's like the it's like whenever they started doing the actual the look of the movies or whatever. This is the first time they did that. And that's that was only a dollar. And then this was the Year of the Villain uh, Capullo cover for twenty five cents. So everybody was. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, everybody was raving about it, so I picked it up, and it was only 25 cents, so I mean, like, there was a whole bunch of them there, so I was like, might as well grab one, so. I mean, it's Capullo anyway, so can't go wrong with that. I mean, 25 cents, I don't think you can go wrong with that, right? No, no. They used to have a free one, though. (laughs) Huh. And then, uh... I don't know. I always pick these up. I mean, like, these ones right here, uh, Fallen Angel. Like, it's only a dollar, but I always pick them up anytime because I like the story. It's a newsstand. It is got, hey. a, it's got a fold right there, I guess, but oh well, for a dollar, I can't complain. Yeah. About. So. Oh, hey, Count Von Strange. Good and to I always like that effect, like how they did that, like the effect right there. You see that, like how they just like faded it from black to like kind of like the material, and then, and like that's like how they used to do that all the time. And then, uh, what's this? This is the first. Uh, oh, this was like a minor key at one point in time because of the Captain Marvel thing. Is uh, what's the name? Of, I I forget the name of her uh, her team or whatever. What the heck? Alpha flight? No, something star star something. But this this is the issue. This is I paid four bucks for this, but this is like hmm. the issue of uh the first appearance of her team that she's on or whatever. I, I forget the name of it. Carol Core? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. I didn't care. I was like, well at least caps on the cover, you know, that'll work for me. So who that but yes, yeah, him and Hercules and who else? Uh Crystal, and then that's a, I believe that's Deathbird, Deathbird, yeah, Deathbird Strikes. That's cool. So, I picked that up because it was just a minor key. And then, uh, I don't know, I just like this cover, man. This was like a cover that I wanted back in the day. Uh, Looks like a Venom, it looks Venomized, I don't know, it looks Venomized, but it's Tony Stark climbing out of the Iron Man. Huh. That is pretty crazy. But it looks minimized, doesn't it? But it, yeah, I don't know if it is though. But it looks like it is. Though. That's a pretty recent book, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, like seven or whatever. Yeah, and I wanted it, but like I could never find it, and I just happened to find it at that place. So they had a copy of it, which was cool. And Sweet. then they also had this book right here, which this is now a key, which is weird. This is a key <laughs> book, so. So uh, the, the the how it is a key is uh it's not a, it's not a first it's a first appearance but it's not a first appearance. Now how is that possible? Only Rob Liefeld can make this happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> just that Spider Man book? No 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 it's that Major X book. Okay so Major X you know they had the whole ordeal where he was like you know supposedly. In Spider Man Deadpool, I think 27 or something like 22, 27 or something like that. Like, that's supposed to be like his first cameo appearance, but it's not his first appearance. It's supposed to be Major X1. Well, now this is the second printing of Major X1, but it's the first time he appears without his helmet on. So, this is a key. Oh, wow. So, this is a key because he's on the cover with no helmet. This is Is the first time. He's ever like if you go look at all the books, he's always got his helmet on. It's the first time without the helmet. Is that a variant? Yeah, yeah, it's a the second printing variant. Life fails. Yeah, so it's, that's supposed to be like a, a kind of a key thing because they never saw him without his helmet on on the cover. So this is the first time they do it. And then I was able to find a Major X number two, which they had 
this. Is that a Liefeld cover too? Yeah, that's all Liefeld. Yeah, you can't tell by the weird Wolverine. Yeah, that's what I figured, man. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like and like these are these are sold out. Like these are like a yeah, lot of places that people are saying like it's sold out. Like two, one, uh, what was it three, three or something like that? Yeah, like three. They're saying like, oh, it's sold out. This is sold out, and it's like. Uh, and Joe said no feet on that cover. <laughs> yeah, there is no feet on that cover. No feet on either one of these covers. Matter of fact, no feet. Right. No feet. <laughs> and so that, that's uh, what I got from the first store. That was the first store I went to. I grabbed all that stuff. And uh, I mean, like, I was looking for, I was, I, and I, the whole time I was looking for the uh, the Thor 390, which I already have. I have a Thor 390. I was looking for that. Because it's like, you know, when the stuff's like that, you can just, just see if you can find it. And then I was like, I'm, I'm doing the same thing today in my LCS. I, look, <laughs> I, I, I went to the back and she was looking for that Thor 390 just to check. Yeah, yeah, you know, check, you know, look. And I was looking for the Avengers, uh, what is it, 12? or The one with uh, Iron Man holding the, the uh, Infinity Gauntlet in his hand or whatever. Well, hell, but that one, you know, I was looking for that. I was looking for that in Thor 390 and, uh, just you know, just looking for them, you know, because, like, those are books to me, like, you, you can find. You can find those books. Yeah, that's uh, what I was thinking. And it's like, so I was looking for that. And so I didn't find either one of them, but I did find uh, some books that are supposed to be, like, hard to find or hard to get or whatever, and, like, uh, this was at another LCS, but this is, uh, and I have no, I, I, I bought it for the purpose of reading the story, because I have no idea why it's so hot, but, like, this is the third printing of the issue one of uh, Naomi, and uh, this is the third printing. So I don't, this is supposed to be like the last printing they're doing in this or whatever. So I got it because you never know; it might be like the Hulk three seventy seven, where it's you know the third printing is the rare one or whatever. I I, you know. I think that third printing is even getting not like the first print, but I think that one's already. Getting up there in price too. So this is the third. This is the third printing of number one. Which yeah. If you can find a two or a, if you can find a one, you're. Uh, and I was lucky to find this. I was lucky to find this because I didn't even think I'd find this. But what was funny was when I found that I found these two too. This is a uh, number two second printing, and uh, good luck finding these because these are sold out too. Like the LCS I went to had. The third print, they had one, two, and then they had three. These were both second printings right here. But they had two and three, you know, second printing. They had one, two, and three. So I was like, might as well grab them. Who knows? But I did want to read the story anyway to find out, you know, what's the big deal about. So I went Yeah, ahead. so that, that third print of Naomi, like, I mean, to me, it's like it can, $10.00. That's including shipping. You can't get it on eBay for walking away without spending at least ten bucks on it. Yeah, I like, mean, so I was just like, those are just like, I don't know. I, I want to read it to see what the hype's all about. So you know. Yeah, I missed that one. So those were those were three books that I was like, when I seen them, I just grabbed them all at the same time, and like this guy kind of looked at me like. Like he wanted to grab, it. you know, like do the same thing I was right. Doing. <laughs> well, I think they, they did a reprinting of the each of the first three issues last Wednesday. Yeah, they came out of the LCS. I don't know because uh, I thought I could find a one, <laughs> like I probably could. Like, if Stop, Trey, was, like, like if I was like really allowed to go look, look like I want to, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I that that's one of the books that I'm always checking for whenever I go anywhere now is that Naomi. Yeah, because it's like it just came out, so you figure like somebody would just have it stashed somewhere in a Yeah, bed. you gotta be I mean, I think it's still early enough to catch somebody slipping. 
and just get the book, you know. And yeah. so that was a couple of the books that I grabbed. And then uh, I think this is the rest of them. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that, Dre. I'm just on a few. Yeah, so this was the rest of them, I guess. But So this is the supposedly sold at. Look, oh, but ha! This is the supposedly sold out Major X3. But he has feet. <laughs> so, hey. Yeah, see, and he has the helmet on. So, like, in all the books, he has his helmet on, except for the f second printing of number one. So, that's number three. Yeah. Major X. Is that a weekly book? I don't know. I would doubt it being Rob Blyfield because he's not really known to keep up on like... I feel like that series just started and it's already on issue three though. Yeah. Maybe I just don't pay enough attention to it. Mm -hmm. all, all I know is it has Beast, Deadpool, and Cable in it. It's got something to do with all three of them. That's cool. And then uh, this one, man, I just always like because uh, I got to get the Demon in the Bottle... Uh, oh yeah that's gotta, one i'd like to have too yeah i gotta get that but and i gotta get that but this is like one that reminds me of that but in a different way right that my first thought when i saw that was wow i i'm i'm shocked that marvel would do something like that just yeah, have a, a glass of alcohol as a cover of one of their books but I yeah, guess it, it's cool. It's cool though. It is it. for sure. I was just kind of shocked that I felt like that would be something Marvel wouldn't do. But I don't. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just. And what's funny was like I was gonna I was gonna order it off of eBay, and like every time I got on eBay to order one, it was either like ten bucks or like twenty bucks or whatever. And then like I was like, well, if I'm gonna do that, I'm also just buy a slab one, and then like a slab. <laughs> that book would look six slabs. Though. Yeah, yeah. See, I wanted to get like I wanted to get this one, and the demon of you know the one where he's looking in the mirror and he's got the bottle next to him and it's yeah. like, the Iron Man, the demon in the bottle one. I would like to have those two like next to each other. That'd be kind of a cool deal. So yeah, I, that's why I like bought this book because I just like the cover of it because it was just like. No, that's a sick cover. It's white, and then it's got, like, the Iron Man and the glass of alcohol. With the ice everywhere. And yeah. Like, yeah. That was cool. So that was, like, when I had to get so when I seen that one. And this last one, this one I just, like, I, I'm a fan of the artist, man. Like, DNA, he's 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 an a, a underappreciated artist to me. Uh, Who? So this, DNA, DNA. Uh, like the letters DNA. Yeah, that's his actual initials, and he actually signs like his. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. But, yeah. But uh, this is a uh, champions number twelve, but it's a variant, and it's a sick variant, man. It's venomized Ultron. Oh wow! And I like the cover because it's just like, and it's done by. See, look, if you can see, it says DNA right there. Oh. DNA. Yeah. And it's got like a little. I'm not sure if I have any of his work, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because he's the one that did that. Uh, the Captain Marvel that I have, where she's sitting on the asteroid, and it's like a homage to the Supergirl book. Mm. He's the, he's the one that did that. So it's a pretty cool cover. So that like that's all the stuff I found like just today when I went out looking at. It's a nice little pickup book uh nice little whatever group paul nice little hall of books <laughs> yeah i was just uh amazed to find the uh Na those naomi books dude yeah um i i haven't seen any of those around so yeah yeah that's nakayama yeah nakayama but he goes by dna it's like it says dna or something like that <sighs> What's up, Chris Hessian? What's up? So yeah, I was gonna we were gonna talk about uh variants and what's what's like your, your deal on variants? Because like I just showed this one right here, this variant right here. Oh uh, man, <clears throat> I, you know, I I know a lot of people are either against them or with them. And 
I don't, I don't care. Like, they're cool. They're cool. But I can only buy one copy of each book. So, like, it really has to be one that just, like, grabs my eye now. Because when I first, you know, a couple years ago, I was trying to grab every variant possible. But, um, like, I don't know where it's at. Is it over here? I grabbed this one the other day. Um, Detective Comics 1002. This variant. This is the regular cover. And, um... SCS Collector. I think, that, right. I think that's it. Like, like, like you bought two of the same book, right? Yeah, well, because you're gonna, you're gonna read one. Yeah, yeah, and you want the cool cover, and that's what it is crazy. That that's, that. that's part of the reason why I don't buy as many variants. It's either two of these books, or one of this book, and one of another one. And I, you know, it's hard for me to buy, to buy two of the same book, and I, um, that's why, like. I had to start drawing the limits on what I got because otherwise I was trying to get every variant. And I'm like, I'm buying two of each of these books and I really only need one. Um, so I kind of cut back on variants. Yeah, like but, I bought. But I still, there's another one. Like, I think I grabbed the variant for Hulk Marines, the last one that came out. And I feel like I thought I did another one. But yeah, that was part of the reason why I didn't get deceased because they had the Francisco and Latina variant and it was sweet. But if I got that, I was going to have to buy a regular cover copy too. And then there was, uh, there was another one. I don't remember. Oh, the Ninja Turtles Batman series. There was, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they had a sick cover, man. But I was like, well, if I buy this, I got to buy two copies of this. And I was like, I can't do that. I can't afford to do that. And then another thing was with those is they're issue ones. So if I bought it, if I read it and I liked it, then I'd have to put it on my pull list. And I, I, I don't want to add it more to my pull list right now. So it's just like sometimes you just have to write it off and not go with it at all because it's like otherwise you sit there and, you know, when you can't find it in a couple weeks, you, you get pissed off or something like that. I have to set these lines and know, okay, well, you know what? I might miss out on this one. Like, I missed out on Naomi for the same reason, too, you know? Like, exactly. It's just I got a certain amount of books on my pool list that I enjoy, and in order to add something new or start buying a new series, like, I'd have to take something off. And then it's like because I need to save some money for, like, hunting my back issues. Because if I spend all my money on my pool list, then I can't go back issue hunter. So it's just like, you know, like you got to give some and you got to take some in certain areas. At least that, uh, that's how it is for me, you know? Yeah, it was like with uh, the variant thing. It's like, it, and I see what you're talking about because it's like uh, when the uh, X Men came out, like, or when Captain Marvel came out, the uh, number one, uh, you see it, I bought like, uh, what was it like? probably like six, seven issues of the same issue, but just different covers. And yeah. it's like, and Thanatos, you know, Thanatos was famous for doing the same thing with the Green Lantern number one. Yeah. And, uh, and like, uh, speaking of Green Lantern, like this well, it's like Immortal Hulk. I've got, I think I have five different issues number one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I knew that was going to be my series, and I, before, you know, that's just you know, I'm the whole. Man, if you had that, if you had that number two, like the number two, either the uh, not the. I have the Doctor Fry one, and then I have the second printing. Oh, you got the one where he's at the the with the uh, the brick wall or whatever, where he's breaking through the brick wall. Yeah. No, not that one. There's another one I have. I think it's like all black, and it's got like a little something in the middle. Of it. Oh, okay, because there's like one where it's like he's like something like a brick wall or something like that. Yeah, no, I know which one. It's like that's the Marvel Knights one, I think. It's got the MK or something up in the corner, and he's like, ah. Yeah, and it's like, I think like a 250 yeah. book or something it like is. that. I, I don't have that. I think that might, I don't know, that might be a second print or something. I don't know which one. But see, this, is a, this book right here is a prime example of me buying the book just for the cover. Not knowing what the story is because the cover is just so sick or the artist is just so cool that you just buy the book, even though you, you 
it's just for the cover. It is like the, that's how a variant gets you, man. And it's like this was a Pirello, uh Green Lantern that came out a couple, like I think, like two weeks ago. Oh, wow. And look at that, man! Pirello killed that. And it's like, uh, you know, I had to get that. And it was like for no other reason than the cover. And it's just like that's sick. And that's like you know that's one of the deals where it's like. And then it's like you you get these books sometimes and like sometimes the cover that you pick you you know like it, there's speculation to it sometimes you pick a cover because it's cool sometimes you pick a cover because you think it's gonna be the hot cover and and then like you know and you never know which one it's gonna be because it's you, there's the one that might be the one like all right take for instance this book that I have right here. I paid twenty dollars for this book. I had no idea. All I knew is I knew that I liked Alex Ross, and so I don't have a Detective Twenty Seven, but I got this, and I was like, you know, I was like, that was the closest thing I could I could get because I ordered it for twenty bucks, and the next thing you know, it went like to like two hundred bucks. I think at one point in time, like three to four hundred or something like that. But is that the one Detective Comics One Thousand? Yeah, the tech, it's the but it's the Alex Ross one though, and that's the one that's like everybody. Oh, wants. okay, nice. Everybody wants the Alex Ross one for some because it's like the homage to the the very first Batman appearance. So, oh wow! So yeah, no, that's a sweet one. I just I I got an A to Jim Lee, I believe. Yeah, and and that's like another variant that was just like because of the cover, it was like you know. It sh shot up a little bit and went kind of, you know, high like the, uh, like the the spider ghost, the spider Gwen or whatever, where she is in the rain or whatever, and she's got the headphones or, and it's like a seven hundred thousand dollar book or something like that. Uh, but like, yeah, man, like, like these variants, man, you just don't know anymore. But it's like you want them because they look cool. You end up spending a little extra money because, you know, like Jeffrey said, you, you want to read one and you want to keep the good looking one. Yeah, that's a um, big part of it, man. I, I think as somebody who collects, like you always want, you always do that because I've been into collecting for so long and you see that how things can just all of a sudden, something will be hot and it'll just go crazy. So, like, you want it. You don't want to miss out on that next hot thing, but um, it's just hard. Like, I can't get them all. I know some people, they buy plenty, but. Oh, I don't see how people do it because, like, I'm like how uh, who that says and JD goes back to, you know, you spending all this money on these variants and stuff when you can be getting you like a, a, a big boy book or getting you a, a a grail or something that you wanted. And that's why, I don't know, man, I think that's why I had cut back on buying a lot of stuff, you know, like a lot of new books lately. Yeah, yeah, I, I cut back on mine too. Um, and um, I had some that ended, like um, I had a couple of short mini series. And like Venom First Host was on there when it came out. Um, uh, that in Matt Injustice vs. Masters of the Universe, that was good. Um, that was like a five issue miniseries. I've cut a lot off. Um, it's just at this point, it was trying to weed out what was mostly hype because sometimes when a new book comes out, you get hyped up on it and then. You get a couple of issues in, you're just like, eh. like Punisher was like that for me. Um, that new Fantastic Four one was like that for me. I had to cut those off. Um, there is that that uh, book, um, Crowded from Image. I stopped getting that one because didn't really care for it. I gave it like five, six issues. Um, Miss Marvel, I let go because it was just becoming something that uh, I wasn't enjoying. Things like that. Um, you try to stick with it for a while, but I mean, financially, it's just like I'm trying. I'm trying to get some more back issues and you know, older books. So yeah, I mean, like sometimes, like you have to, you have to focus. Like how uh, who that said, you have to focus. 
And like variants are cool, but like I said, like at the end of the day, it, do you want to have a, a cool variant? And don't get me wrong, I mean, like there's some, you know, there's some variants out there that are worth a lot of money, but like, but would you rather you have a cool variant? Yeah, yeah. Would you rather have a cool variant, or would you like rather have like a, a X Men one, or, or, or you know, or the Hulk number one, or whatever? You know, you'd rather have those. And it's like, and I sit there and think about that sometimes, and it's like, there's books in my collection that I have that um, I could get rid of to get an X Men one, but then it's like I sit there and it's like I'm like, it's like pulling teeth, man, because it's like, dude. I've never sold any of my books. Like, I've given some away. I, I've gotten rid of some I have, but, like, I give them away more so than anything. But, like, it's very hard to part with them. Pretty much any book that I've ever given to anybody has been a book that I, I've got doubles of, too, because I, I can't, like, not have it in my collection, right? So, like, when I go out and I get stuff for, like, giveaways, like, I always have to buy two of them. Like, I have to buy one to give to somebody, but I also have to buy one for myself. Because, you know, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, like kind of like you did with Hulk 102, right? Like, you buy yourself one and then you buy one to give away. Like, I, yeah. I couldn't sit here and buy this book and then, like, have only one copy and then, like, be like, oh, here you go. It's hard. Like, it's hard to get rid of anything. Like, I, I've been collecting for so long and I, I, I don't ever get rid of anything. Like, yeah. What's up, G-Pap? Yeah, G-Pap, what's up? And we got, uh, yeah, why don't you give a couple shout-outs? <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, for sure. G-Pap joining us tonight. Good to see you, buddy. Fuchsia only. What's up, Fuchsia? Good to see you. Got our boy, Comic Noob. Chris Hacien. I believe that Chris was joining us the other night when we were talking about uh, wrestling, the AEW and the WWE that was coming up, we were talking about. Oh, Tech yeah. 30. Tech 31 kid, Joe 47771. Good to see you tonight, Joe. Uh, we got Matt, the boy who had seven, as always. Good to see you, my brother. Hope you're having a good night. We got our friend, comic lover Omega. How are you doing tonight, comic lover? Louis Ramirez, 504. What's up, Louis? How you doing tonight, buddy? We have Dre Boogie, our boy Dre, stopping by tonight. We got Gorilla Grod. Good to see you, Gorilla Grod. We have live from Latveria joining us. Count Von Strange, our boy Hudat, stopped by earlier, along with Stephen Oates. How are you doing tonight, Stephen? We had John's Comics with Kids in here. So, yeah, we've had a good night tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll do a quick recap of the books I showed earlier because if who just ever came in. So this was the uh, the DNA uh, variant for Champions Twelve, Venomized Ultron. I just found that thought it was kind of a cool cover. Uh, then I had the uh, Tony Stark Iron Man number eight, which I just love the cover of that with the. Uh, Glass of liquor. Thought that was kind of cool. So I have that. Then the ever popular third printing of the first issue of Naomi, along with the second printings of two and three. So these are all together. So I just smashed them all up. So lucky to get those, I guess, in the. Everybody's hollering about that for some reason, but yeah, let me know what you think when you read it too. And then uh this is like this is another this is another key thing now. So th- this is the major X number one, second printing, but it's relevant because it's the first time he's ever without his helmet on a cover. So this is a relevant book, so if you see one of these, pick it up because it's a second printing of number one, but it's the first time he does not have his helmet on. As you can see in two and three, he's actually got. Does he ever take his helmet off in the books or not? I think so in the books. I think he does in the books. I haven't looked yet, but like I know on the covers of the books, he never has it off except for this. So that's why they're talking. It's on CBSI. They're talking about it. Everybody's talking about it because it's the first time he's on the cover of the book with his. 
face showing. He still looks like Strife and Cable and everything. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> Shatterstar or something like. Yeah, yeah. yeah they like, all got that one. Bob Liefeld early '90s look. And then uh, what was that? I had this came out a while back, but I just found it and I just wanted to cover because it, it was kind of cool. Tony Stark kind of looked like it was. A, it kind of looked venomized, and it they never really said it was, but it just looked like it was. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, it does. For sure. So it was kind of cool, and then uh, these are just some backish. Well, just some stuff I found. Uh, first appearance of the. I still don't remember the team. The team that uh, Carol Danvers is on. Uh, their their first appearance from the movie or whatever. But that's their first appearance. Then I always just grab this anyway because I like Fallen Angels, so I always buy that book for some reason. And then uh, this villain book for twenty five cents. Everybody kept talking about the Hulu cover, so I just got to the cover. So. Okay. Show. And then this for a dollar couldn't beat it. New X Men 114. Where they actually start wearing the actual like movie outfits and stuff. So. And then I showed this one, which was the uh Pirello Green Lantern. And then I just liked from a week ago or so. And then I'm still, I still got this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I think I'm gonna sell it probably. I don't know, but I might keep it. I don't know. But cool. Cross Detective One Thousand. So, yeah, that's all the stuff I got for New Comic Book Day, except for the uh, Alex Ross. I had that for like a, a couple weeks ago. Nice. Well, I'll go ahead and show you guys what I got today. Bam, I picked up War of the Realms, issue number three. Arthur Adams. Yeah. I mean, I'm um, that, it up today. Is it is it a good read? Because, like, I've got. Okay, this is issue three, and I've got a stack of, like, 50 books that I picked up over the last month that I haven't read yet, and it's in there. So I don't know, um, to be honest with you, the truth. I haven't read it yet. It's one that I'm going to read. I just have been busy, you know? Busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna read that uh, Naomi because I want to see what the deal is with that. Because I mean, like forever, that's gonna be like a book that I'll refuse to buy or pay a lot for because I feel like I could just find it. <laughs> Especially right now, like I mean, it seemed, but I mean, they did that with some of those Immortal Hulk books too. It just seems so new to be so freaking like oh, hot and expensive. Yeah. Bucks rock, I feel like. I mean, maybe that's just me being old and living in the past or something, but, man. Well, well that's like whenever uh, they were talking about the Immortal Hawk uh, 2 or whatever. That's the exact I, book I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, and I went back, and I went back to uh, one of my LCSs, and they had, like, two copies. And I bought one, and, like, on, in hindsight, I, I'm thinking about it now, I should have bought both of them. But I'm that guy that's like, oh, I shouldn't be greedy and just take one. And I, I know. Do you do that? Do you? I, do. I do. Like, if there's a book there and I'm thinking, man, like, this is hot or something, and there's only, like, two of them left, I'll be like, oh, I'm not going to be a jerk. I'll save some. I know somebody else will want it. I'll, I'll, so I'll just take one, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just common courtesy, I guess, right? But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not greedy. Like I said, I always... I always say I only need one of that book, you know. Like, I, don't, I don't need multiple copies. Exactly, and that's like, and I thought about that, and I was like, man, I do that a lot. And it's like, and it maybe that's like, you know, sometimes that's when I get the good karma when I come in, and there's like a book that I'm looking for, and it's, you know, it's like, oh, there's one left. <laughs> yeah, I for sure. There's been a couple times where I've done that too. Um, walk in, there's only been one left, and be like, Yes, when that person who bought the one before me could have bought them all, you know, and they saved one, so like, it happens to me. So, oh, yeah, Je Jeffrey got the best karma. <laughs> Jeffrey's, karma's, Jeffrey's karma's so good, he can commit a bad crime and still have good stuff happen. Oh, man, no, oh, 
Jeffrey's karma so good, he could go to hell and, and the devil would be like, go on now, go, go. We don't, no, no, no. Oh, man. Too nice got to be down here, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm a firm believer if you get what you give, right? So, like, when you treat somebody, you know, good, like, it's nice to, like, have somebody treat you back the same way. Like, that's how I believe. Heck, yeah. So there's no reason to be a jackass. <laughs> so uh and hi Mike Johnson. What's up, man? Oh Mike, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, we were up late and uh we were we were planning on doing this earlier, but Jeffrey had to work late. I know, right? Like I mean, we've been trying to do this show, me and Chad and Kenny for like two months. And I've, like, flaked out of every episode because it's, like, the one time, that, like, I typically I'm off at, like, 5 o'clock, almost like clockwork every day. And it's, like, the one time that we sat down and we're, like, we're really going to do this today. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, it'll, I'll, I'll be off by 5. I told you last night, like, I'll yeah. be off probably, like, 5. You know, like, I make plans. And it's when I make plans, like, it always gets messed up. When I don't have any plans and I have nothing to do, it's just everything's like clockwork. I don't know. That's just the way it goes, right? <laughs> well, at least the truck didn't catch fire this time. <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> oh, man. That's a great day. When your truck don't burn down, that's a great day. Well, you sent me that video footage. I was just like, are you? <laughs> I was like, are you all what right? do you Yeah, man. That was crazy. Uh, I've been in a fire like that before, so. So yeah, so the whole variant thing, it, it's got its ups and downs. Uh, I remember, like, th another thing about variants that that that'll get you now that that used to be different back in the day was uh, back in the day the person doing the cover was usually the guy doing the artwork inside the book. So if the cover looked good, you knew the artwork on the inside was going to be good. And Not now. Like that. Yeah, now it's not the case. Now the cover could look super nice. <laughs> and then you open it up and it's like... You know what? Like, whether the interior art is good or bad, like, it it used to kind of all flow together. The cover would flow. Nowadays, it doesn't matter what the cover looks like. Typically, you open up the cover and the interior art is nothing like the cover. Not that it's always bad, but it's usually... Like, it kind of throws you off, right? You look at you like, oh, my gosh, this is sick. And then you open it up, you're like, this is totally different. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it, 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 and I'm old school like that, I guess, because like, I was always one, like, if Todd McFarlane drew the cover, then he was doing the interior work. If Mark Bagley did the cover, he was doing the interior work. Now you got guys like J. Scott Campbell, no interior work. Then you got, like, you know, uh, Art Germ, no interior work. Or, you know... Or uh, Matina, or Adam Hughes, or whoever, and you know, or even even Alex Ross is guilty of it too. You know, he'll do a cover, but he won't do the interior. But he's, you know, he'll do his stuff too. But I wonder if that comes though from more of the the company, like you know, like Marvel or DC. They're like, all right, you guys are our main artists. You're doing the covers, and we'll have somebody else do the interior work. So while they're working on the covers, they probably got their other artists that are doing the interior art. I'm assuming that's probably how it works. Yeah. And it's like, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I remember like, like whenever I wanted to be like in comic books and draw and stuff like that in the industry and stuff, like you had to know how to do it, like all the interior stuff. Like there was no, Oh, you could be just a, a cover artist. You had to be like, you know, able to do everything, birth right. and everything. You had to know how to do everything. And so, like, I'm sitting there, like, learning how to do everything I could learn how to figure out to do. And now you got guys just like, oh, I just do covers. I do pinup covers. That's all I do. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, you know, it's, I mean, like, they're, they're great, man. They're cool. But it's just like, when I go to read the book, it's like, like all right, like, all right, take for instance, we'll, we'll go, for, for example, we'll use this. Okay, so awesome, cool cover. Now, what do you think the inside is going to look like? Could be, Mike. Mike, it could be. Let's see. What do we got? So, I got to watch that show again. Hold on. Let me get to a good example of the art. <laughs> Do you watch any of the trailers for that new Sonic the Hedgehog movie? 
Man, that is horrendous, dude. <laughs> I kind of want to watch it though. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I watched that trailer and I was kind of, it kind of made me laugh. Kind of made me want to be like, you know what? I actually want to see that. All right, so that's the cover, and so then we'll go with this page right here, which is the splash page. And don't get me wrong, it's it's nice artwork and stuff, but that is not. All right, like to have that guy's drawn or whatever right there. Okay, so then I go back to right here, and so you're expecting to see something like that, and then you get to like, nope. Yeah. So, so it kind of kills it, man. You know, it's like. Um, we were looking at that new Red Sonja book or whatever today. Kenny picked it up. And he opened it up. He's like, man, check out. He was like holding it up. He's like, check out this cover. This cover is awesome and all this stuff. And then he like opens it up. He's like, oh my gosh, this is the worst art I've ever seen. And I was like, what? So he, he was showing it to us. It's like, it was just sometimes you could tell like the, the cover looks like they put all this time and effort into it. And then you open up the cover and you could tell like it was quickly done. You know, it was, there's no detail in the, in, in the work and stuff like that. But. Oh yeah, and I don't know. Like some of these, some of these are just like he says, Sonic is crazy. Yeah, but did you see like the eye? Like they couldn't even do the like. They it have, looks so. It doesn't even look like Sonic. The I know. Sonic. Like they have. Uh, I will never understand Hollywood to the point where you have a blueprint. You have literally a whole blueprint of information that will help you make this suitable for people that will be like, okay, I will go ahead and watch. The only thing in that whole Sonic thing that looks good is Jim Carrey. Yeah, I, I got a <laughs> kick out of that, dude. Like, I, I think that might have been the part of the reason why I enjoyed that trailer so much and made me want to see it, because I, I think Jim Carrey would probably do a hilarious job at that. But it's like they, they tried to make Sonic look more like a real hedgehog, and they tried to make him look like Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, like, I mean, there's basically a, a 3D graphitized or whatever you call that, like 3D, like rendered graphic of a real hedgehog that they colored blue instead of making it look like Sonic the Hedgehog from the video game. Yeah, like, dude, like, I've seen, I don't know. Hey, hey like, Splash Page. What you like, doing? And there's been instances where, like, I've seen, like, all right, like, whenever I've seen, like, uh, they had Age of Apocalypse, and they showed Apocalypse. And I swear the dude looked like the villain from the Power Rangers movie. And I was like, the I was it Ivan Ooze or yeah, Ivan Ooze. He looked like Ivan Ooze. And I was like, this is supposed to be Apocalypse. And I've seen a cosplay. They showed like a there was like a thing on uh, Facebook, and they had like the, the 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 Apocalypse character from the movie next to a cosplay character, a guy that did cosplay, and the guy in the cosplay cosplay. Looked way better, like 100% better than the actual Hollywood effects that they had used to make the Apocalypse guy. So I'm sitting there like, you telling me that this guy, that this 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 big company Hollywood, that they could not make a decent thing with blueprints that they already had. So this Sonic movie to me is horrible because like if you see it, it's like his eyes aren't like you know because Sonic has those those weird eyes that connect, you know, like that. Like it's just, and it's like now he has like. An eye over here and an eye over here. I'm like, well, no, Sonic has one big eye, basically. Yeah, no, there's actually um, Google, uh, if you, I just typed in Ivan Ooze, and there's actually a photo comparison uh, side by side of Apocalypse. Oh, did you see Ivan it? Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, dude, that's crazy, right? I told you. It's like, it's like they just need to like I don't know, man. They don't take pointers on stuff like they do stuff to that they think will be appealing to I don't know who, but not us. You know, it's like we're the fans. You know, we know what we like. You know what we know. What we you know what the stories are supposed to be like. Like when I watched uh, uh, Infinity War and like yeah. you know he did the snap and everybody you know half the people died or whatever. I was happy. And people were like, you know, why? I was like, because they were supposed to lose. If you read Infinity, 
if you read Infinity, <laughs> if you read Infinity Gauntlet, you know that they lose at the beginning. Yeah. So it's just like one of those deals, man. It's like if you know the story, you know, stick to the story. Like that Fantastic Four movie that they recently had done that was so horrible because they didn't do any of the source material. Like they had a black, uh, was it uh, Johnny Storm? Uh, Sue Storm was adopted by Johnny Storm's parents or something like that. And that was weird. And then like they didn't go into space. They go into a different dimension. And <clears throat> Yeah, that, that, that was it's different. Yeah. Well, so. So hopefully they get that right too. They get the Fantastic Four right too. So they're gonna have to get it at least halfway right if they introduce it into the cinematic universe. So I mean, like, okay, it's we're twenty two movies into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and there's been a few not great movies, but they really haven't dropped any super bad ones on us. So. Uh, I, I I think there that Marvel is in good hands, you know, as far as the movies that are being made. Um, the bottom of the list is probably like Thor: The Dark World, Iron Man Three, and the Incredible yeah, Hulk. Like, but they're not bad. I'm not saying they're bad, but I mean, as far as out of 22 movies, you got three that are pretty not memorable. Like I, I, that's the best way for me to describe them. Is they're they're not memorable. They're not bad. I'll sit down and I'll watch them. I'll enjoy okay, them. Okay, ne next bro talk. Next bro talk. We'll we'll do our own list of how we rank the the Marvel Cinematic. Universe. I already have a list written out, so I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm good to go on that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, so that that'll be on the next bro talk. We'll we'll, we'll throw out our our list of what we think was the. Uh, I'll tell you what my number one is. Like I and, and people will be like, oh. It's probably Endgame. Nope. That's mine. I'm not going to lie. That's... I mean, like, Endgame, I'm going to say Endgame is my number two. And then number three would be uh, Infinity War. And then, but, like, my number one, and I don't know, like, I just like the movie. I don't care. It, 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 it can kind of tie in with or without the, the cinematic universe, but it's just a, just a good movie, good all-around story. Uh, Winter Soldier, man, Captain America Winter Soldier will always be my favorite Marvel movie because, like, it's just like the I don't know, it's something about like what, like the elevator ride, and then, like, when they kind of you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, when I see that, I was like, oh, he's in the elevator again. <laughs> that I, I think that that one's like 13th on my list or something like that. No, that's like number one on mine because, like. Tech said, uh, <laughs> Chris said, in game is last. Uh, <laughs> Civil War for me. Yeah, Civil War is pretty, Civil War is pretty good. It's, I think it was in my top five, I think. I can't remember. We'll figure out. I, I got it right over there. I can't see it right now. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, the, and what's weird is like, all right, that's like if you, if you rank the, the Thor movies, Thor Ragnarok is the best one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's dude. That was that was probably my favorite until Endgame came out. I I have that listed as number two. Yeah, because that's on, on my list for sure. Ragnarok, because dude, I laughed so hard in the theater when that came out. Yeah, and Chris, like, Chris Chris is talking about the first Iron Man. That's I mean, like that. I just watched it. I just watched it. It, it, it like. One through five is super close. Like, because at, at first, Iron Man, the first Iron Man, I was like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite for sure. And then I said, well, I'd actually, you know, like, what about this one? Like, one through five is very close debate, man. Like, yeah. I mean, they all are. Like, seriously, like, there's like 18 movies, and they all could possibly be, for me, like, in a in a different position like you know it, it was so hard when i sat down and narrow out my list there's about a stack of like 10 the like a call to like 10 of the movies where either one is pretty much interchangeable like number 18 10 through 18 could all easily easily be moved around you know what i mean like yeah it's hard 
that's the same thing for and uh Joe said I like how Spider-Man movies stand alone. The funny thing about Spider-Man movies is that is a war in itself because you have your Tobey Maguire fans, which I am an avid advocate of Tobey Maguire. I don't care what people well, say. Well, the new Spider-Man movies are part of the MCU. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about like, you know, like when people talk about Spider-Man movies, because then you have like your uh, Tom Holland fans, Tobey Maguire fans, and then uh, uh, what's Andrew Garfield. There's really fans of Andrew Garfield? Yeah, they're they're there. People swear he was he was better than some, and I I, I don't know, man. Like I I he I appre- I appreciated what Tobey Maguire did. Like to me, Spider Man Two was was to me and still kind of is will always be the best Spider Man movie because I mean like Doc Ock was awesome in it. Like you know the story was good in it. Uh, dude, like. He got pimp slapped by James Franco or Harry or Harry twice in the movie. I watched it. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, he did slap him at the wedding. He was like, pow, pow, you know, because he was mad about you know his dad was dead and yeah, uh, Peter was you know Peter was protecting his you know Spider Man and this and that and taking pictures of him. Well, yeah, yeah the, when those movies came out, those were far like superior than most of the superhero movies we'd seen oh, at yeah. that. Point. So. Oh yeah, but yeah, like I don't know, like that. Just, just to me, it was just like one of the ones that I, I liked back then. Like so. No, oh, dude, when those movies came out, like they they were top notch. They were good. I mean, oh, I still like I still like them to this day. Like, yeah. but I'm not. Sure. Wrong. I'm really uh, start. I'm really starting to like the, what's this new kid's name? Tom Holland. Yeah, Tom Holland's doing a great job. No, don't get me wrong. I love the kid. He's doing a great job. And uh, but like. Like I said, though, it's like there wouldn't be a Tom Holland though if there no, was a Tom McGuire. That's yeah. real. T- I mean, those those are some great movies. Like they always will be, I think. Yeah, I always like the. But see, that's why I said like Spider-Man movies are like a whole other batch, you know, on its own. So it's like, but yeah, like the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like DC, I could name I could name DC right now. I could I could name DC if it. Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that uh, Shazam movie yet. I really want to, and I just haven't made it around to getting there yet. But um, Aquaman and Wonder Woman are my top one and two. And I haven't even seen Shazam, and I'll just say it's number three for now. <laughs> so. Thank you. No, it's a good movie. Uh, my kids think it's number one, and I'm not gonna say it's not number one. I'm just saying, like I, I show it, I show Aquaman respect because I feel like Aquaman is like their Iron Man, and so yeah, I mean what, that's definitely the biggest thing they've had yet. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know. So like, like I said, just those things to me, like you know. Yeah. No, for sure. And um, like we were talking the other night, I think about what Marvel has coming up. I think I think that they're gonna. I think they're gonna use some new people. You know, they're gonna do some new things. Well, I think for sure they're gonna hopefully use this guy back here, Nova. Yeah. Hopefully they use that guy. Definitely rumored to be in that new Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh no, that's Warlock, huh? Warlock is, I guess, supposed to be in the new Guardians of the Galaxy. All right. He said uh, Spider-Man 3. You know what's funny, Chris? Out of all the Spider-Mans, except for the uh, the Tom Holland one, uh, which was the Tom, the Tom Holland one, is like I think it's the top grossing one right now. But up until that point in time, Spider-Man 3 was the highest grossing Spider-Man movie ever. You know, I like that one a lot. I, I think that was the one that gets like the least amount of people liking it out of the three mm-hmm. that three series. But I think that was my favorite one, to be honest with you. No, I, my kids loved it because like they still like it to this day because they like uh, uh, dancing Spider Man or the jazz when he's like doing you know like. He's oh yeah, 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 yeah! His black suit, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, my kids love that part. That's like their total like that's like they always have to see that part when it comes on. That's funny. 
So, but yeah, that's, if you go look it up, though, uh, Spider Man 3 was actually the top grossing at one point in time, top grossing Spider Man film ever made. And uh, I think Tom Holland's now is like Spider Man Homecoming is the top one now. So I think it's Spider Man Homecoming, then Spider Man 3, and then like the other ones. When's that Far From Home supposed to come out? Pretty soon? Mm-hmm. I don't know, but isn't it like a, a prequel, right? Isn't it? I don't know. I thought that it was, but um, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I think but somebody was might, telling me it wasn't. So then it might not be though, because yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. It's, it's probably not. Uh, I don't and that's know. like, and that's another thing, like uh, on that one, because like our on because uh, like Hollywood, they change things or whatever. So. Yeah, Tobey Maguire, they changed, you know, that instead of him making the web shooters, he had organic web shooters so he could just shoot them automatically. So that was a different thing in there. So then you had uh, Andrew Garfield. He made his, which was kind of cool. So I thought that was, you know, like stuck to the story. But like, looks like Joe says July 5th for that Far From Home. So it uh, looks like they're planning on it being a summer blockbuster. Oh, okay. Well, what was weird is like, Oh, girl, name's not even Mary Jane. It's just like it's. I like it's, that girl though. She's pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they did a good job of switching it up. Yeah, they're like MJ. They just call me MJ. I was like, oh, okay. I see how they play it. She's just MJ. She's not Mary Jane. MJ. Yeah, she's a, she's a little hipper than the old one, I think. Yeah, so I was just like, that's kind of cool how they played that off. Like, oh, so MJ is MJ, not Mary Jane. <laughs> Well, guys, I guess we're going to call it a night. It's kind of late. And I yeah. know Jennifer's probably got to do something. I got to do something tomorrow. Yeah, work. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this has been another uh, fun-filled edition of uh, Bro Talk. We'll catch you guys later uh, whenever we pop up. <laughs> catch you guys later.